Roosevelt. My name is Roosevelt Pickett. I'm from, I'm from Merlin, South Carolina. They call me Rooster. And I was born over on the, on the Watchersaw Plantation, the Bayfield area. And I got to working on all the lodge here. I is still, still hanging in here. And I'm Theodore Russell, uh, born uh, Booterine. <clears throat> uh, back in those days, you uh, they had midwives, so uh, I was uh, <clears throat> born at home, mm -hmm. midwife in Booterine, what they call Booterine Garden. We lived in the Booterine Garden Sanctuary, and I worked here at Oliver Lodge uh, <clears throat> in high school. Well, I'm Ed Cribb, and I was born in Hemingway, South Carolina, <clears throat> February 21st, 1942. Um, I lived in Georgetown, grew up in Georgetown, then moved to Myrtle's Inlet in uh, 1960, and then to Myrtle Beach in 1968. I was on the creek, and before I went in the creek uh, that morning, we, we, uh, my, my first cousin and I, my mother, and my mother and my aunt, we go in the creek and get the oysters and the clams and the crabs and sell it to different places to different people along the waterfront. So uh, me and Herman Singleton, my first cousin and I, we said, uh, we're going to sell it all over the lodge today. Now, I didn't never, I knew about all the lodge, but never saw it. My uncle used to work here at the Oliver's Lodge, and I heard people speak of all the lodge, but I'd never been there, you know. So I saw this big, old, long building. If you pull up, there's a dock out front, and the dock went across the, from the, the dock went from the trees across the oyster, across the oyster bed to the channel and went along. Before they done the dredging, the channel was went along the front out there. We pulled the boat up, and got our crabs and a few clams, summertime. And by the way, we, me and Herman was barefooted, no shoes, went bogging for crabs, no shoes. I had about two dozen. Herman had about two and a half. <laughs> yeah, really. You people can imagine going to fish yeah. barefooted. We had no shoe. Right. <laughs> Kids, you know. Yep. And um, <clears throat> had him an old bucket with a no bottom. Had a wire to make a bottom to keep an old old um half a bushel bucket. Had uh, then had the had the um, clams. I watched the clams in a um in a in a, in a what we call a water bucket. Smaller mm. bucket. So we come up here to sell our our, our dead catch, and I ran around to the back and I knock on the door and asked for the boss lady or whoever was the boss at that time. Mm. Tina came out, this heavy, real big woman, about look about seven feet tall. We <laughs> standing in the yard there for it. So Herman, you know, Herman said, Herman knew her name and everything. He said, Miss Tina, we come, Miss Oliver, we come to see if you want to buy some crabs and some clams. She said, oh, let me see what y'all got. She come down the steps, just as cheerful as ever, had an apron, and wiping the hand with a towel out of the kitchen. Then along came some of the, some of the ladies working with her, and they looked in the bucket and they said, oh yeah, this is just what we need. How much you want for them? So I don't know, I didn't know money at that time, or whatever. <laughs> Bummer said, we want three dollars. <laughs> we got three dollars a piece. Uh, yeah. And that was big money for two couple of kids. Uh, yeah. Back in those days, dollars. yeah. Yeah. She said, you come back tomorrow? Bring what you catch tomorrow and be buying from it. Bum said, oh, he said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> so the next day we came back with about the same, you know. He said, bring us some oysters, too. We brought a bushel of oysters, some clams, and about two dozen crabs together. And uh, how much you got for that? We sold it. the oysters was $4 a bushel, a dollar a peck. Uh -huh. And the crabs were for three dollars. The clam and the crab for three dollars again. So you made big money there. Yeah, we, we we left. We had jingles in my pocket, man. <laughs> <laughs> she said we need somebody to clean the yard, rake the yard. And she said, who which one you want to you want to come rake the yard tomorrow after you come up the creek, or come rake the yard in the morning? We came that morning and rake the yard and went in the creek from here. So what we got in the creek that day? And raking the yard, I think we got ten dollars a piece. And we never raked the backyard together, and the mm -hmm. front yard. And we was gone. There wasn't no much trash. Just raked the leaves out from around the trees and stuff. 
and we hold them in a wheelbarrow and an old sack seat mm. and hold it in the back where there's burned trash <clears> back there. And we're ready to go in the creek. And we got paid that afternoon for it. Must have been together about $12, which was good. Mm. 12 14 dollars something like that. I mean, big money. And um, in the Peterson and change, mostly. Yeah. <laughs> Change the dollar bill. Yeah. <clears throat> Quarters. And Bumble got the silver dollar. I won't forget that. The big one. <laughs> <laughs> the big money. Bumble got the big shiny. <laughs> but you know. So she said, Who would like to work have a job to scrub the floor? Bumble said, I don't know what's floor now. I don't scrub floors. I said, I'll scrub the floors. <laughs> so I came the next day, much more and scrubbed the the porch. The first thing I did was scrub the steps. Mm. And then I went up to scrub the porch, the back porch. And then by that time, Bum was ready to go in the creek. So I went and we went in the creek also. So I was a yard boy and the creek boy. And that Bum got another job somewhere else. I think he went up went on, there was a truck go to Myrtle Beach on the farm. So I was stuck with this, yard, with this yard right here, and I wrecked them from the steps, up on the porch, into the kitchen, washing dishes, and this, and then time went long, and I hadn't been a job for years. <laughs> and it's been nice, too. Yeah. And you had and a when place I to took live. Home you had, you $5 go. home a week, that was big money for mama. Yes. And a place to live. And a place to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I didn't start staying right away. Mm -hmm. I worked here about three years before I started working, living. So because because they had an army, they had the crash boats thing here right. on the Omerza, and uh, they would stay upstairs and they used to serve a regular home cooked meal and bowls on the table, like a boarding house style. And uh, they cook that meal for them every day. And then they cook meal right in the kitchen, they take it out in bowls and put it on the table, and they mm. serve themselves down home style, mm. you know, pass the bowl around. Cool. The old way, you know, cook all kind of vegetable and fried fish and shrimp, shrimp pie and stuff, devil crabs and so you, you wouldn't believe it, collars. And they had a big garden across the road too. <laughs> yeah, they grew their own, a lot of their own vegetables, like beans, uh, tomatoes, um, and they, they, they even grew watermelon, believe it or not. Only thing they chopped the watermelon up in small pieces, uh, like that. Right. <laughs> You know, I want. I like the big piece of watermelon. <laughs> you know, but it, put it. You know, put it a little piece with people. Pieces, yeah. You know, anyway, it was good. Yes. I enjoyed my, my. How many people would you say were on staff? Sounds like there were a lot of people here, or did a few? People About do four a lot people. Of work? Four people. That's all. There were four. Who else? Can you remember? Miss Eleanor Nesbitt. Miss mm -hmm. Arthur Nesbitt, Mama. And Miss Arlene, Miss Arlene, Arlene Small, and um, I'm not chicken, um, Miss Mary, and Miss Lucy Lance. Lance, yeah. Remember Mary's last name? No, um, no, it was Mary, um, Franklin Sands, my Sands. Sands. Miss Mary. Miss Sands, she did the housework. Sands, Miss Mary Sands. Yeah. Yeah. And Lucy Lance, too, coming to help clean up. No, they wasn't here every day. They work on and off, like right. special cleaning days. Had days you shine the silverware, um, wash down the walls in different places in the house, and, and just do a regular cleanup thing. And uh, it was a, the regular everyday thing with chain, changing the sheets on the beds. And um, this certain thing you had to do every day. Every, you had to you know what you had to do, wash dishes, make sure everything was ready to go. Not all four of them came every day. Not every day, no. Miss Allen was here every day. Miss Ellen, we yeah, but then had a watch woman. Miss Ellen, Miss Ellen was a watch woman. Wash the clothes at home, bring it in. Mm -hmm. But the baskets full. They go pick it up with the baskets full, mm -hmm. and the clothes be washed and starched and ironed. Oh yeah, they, you know? they did it. <laughs> and she had someone to help her with the sheets and everything. Wasn't no laundry. So mm -hmm. people washed it on. Sheet and hang them out on the, on the, out on, on the line. Wasn't no washing machine, no dryer. 
washing board. Wash the, uh, wash the board, yeah. And the boiling tub. <laughs> and the, the iron pot, you boil your, boil your clothes in. And, rent, and rinse them two or three times and put them on the line. And had wooden clothes pants. Remember those things? Wooden clothes pants, yeah. And a little clothes line, like one, two, three, four, five wooden long clothes line. Well, you had to put them on there and make sure to prop up and don't let the clothes touch the ground. And just watch it for the dogs. We had dogs come to the neighborhood and catch at them sometimes. Play them, you know. When the wind one. blow. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it, it was just a different deal. Who might have been working in that garden? Um, a man named Mr. Matthew, not Matthew, Billy. Billy, Billy, Billy Sparkman. Sparkman. Yeah. Billy Sparkman, he's, he's passed on now. Billy Sparkman. And, I, and then I work in there too. I just like to pick the beans. Ethan Sparkman. Ethan Sparkman. Yeah. Brother. Brother. Yeah. Pick beans, tomatoes, okra. Anything that Anything they had over there. Oh, in the summertime, dig iced potato. Little iced potato. Yeah. Yeah. Now they didn't grow all the vegetables they used, but they, what they grow, what they bear over there, they used it. Back then it was ice potato. Now ice potato. Now it's new potato. Now it's new potato. <laughs> hey, it's called ice potato. They had to change it up. It was, bring it it was up, small you know, like this and put them in the beans. The time. <laughs> yeah. You cook them with beef, cook them with a little fat pack and stuff like that, side meat mm. and onion. It was a big part like that and it was ready to go. And if so much came out of the Mars, so much came out of the garden. Were there other things that, that came in on a truck or things that you remember you see, being delivered? You, you see food. A percentage of it came out of the creek, out of Marizona Creek. Flounder, mm -hmm. blue shell crab, stone shell crab, clam. shrimp, clam. Oysters, some of the oysters. Um, and sometimes they catch the people to catch mullets in the, in the nets and whitings at a certain time of the year they had different kind of fish like that and roe mullets and and and, and the roe mm -hmm. that was a specialty also mm -hmm. so uh it, the, and after a while Marizona couldn't keep up Marizona Creek couldn't keep up with the demand for the seafood they had to get the trucks to come in from Myrtle Beach and McClellanville would bring the shrimp in sometime and uh, later, the, the people that run the, out of Georgetown, the shrimp boat people mm -hmm. would come up and bring shrimp on their truck and sell it with head and everything, and you buy it cheaper like that. <clears throat> and then that was shrimp picking day. Had to head them up. Head them and peel them. Head them and peel them. Yeah. And dress them up and wash them down. We did a lot of that. Yes, sir. Everybody get in on that one. <laughs> and ice them down. And ice them. Oh, yeah. Had to down. keep them ice all the time. Chipped ice. And, and then. See, back then, then you. Where did you get the ice for your crib? Conway. Conway uh, uh, had ice house up here. What's his name? Um, Ori Ice. Ori, Ori Ice, ice Company. Is that right? Used yeah. to bring a big canvas big, bucket yeah. mm -hmm. on the bottom of a tin bottom in it. Mm -hmm. Boy, that was some nice time going up and going to ice house. You had to peel all your shrimp. Yeah, you had to peel them all. You didn't buy it already. Or, peel. Really? No. You, um, you're talking about in the 40s now. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm yeah. coming up, Air man. Air Rescue would have been in World War II. That's when they kept the boats. The yeah, yeah. Back in the 40s. That was a scary time. So you were about eight years old then? Eight or nine or ten. Yeah, there was, was some scary times. That's when you sometimes you turn your lights out at night. Because the Japanese, they say, might come bump, might come, and the German come from the beach. If you didn't know, nobody had, there was law. Yeah, it was, had yeah. it called dark night. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you don't light no lamp. Yeah. Maybe you're so scared, you know, you couldn't even cook stuff or nothing, you know? Yeah, do it daylight time. Huh? Yeah, and then the people go out on the beach and be looking for the. <laughs> I wonder if you're going to see anybody tonight. They ain't never catch nobody. I heard it call him out of North Carolina one time. I don't know how true that was. But he all kind of talk, you know. Yeah. And further up the North on the Atlantic coast. Then you hear every now and then to talk about the Germans sunk a ship off the coast somewhere. Hmm. You know, that was another scary thing. They pick up bodies. They knew it was true because they said they had bodies floating float up on the hill. Hmm. You know, that had been out for days, you know. And all flick. Mm -hmm. From the oil tankers that did, oh, yeah. from the ships and stuff. So it was a scary time back in the forties. Early forties. Early, early forties. Yeah, that was yeah. before my time. Yeah, early forties. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. See, really, when um, when daddy, dad had five kids now, right. five children, and he said, "Oh boy," I he was telling um, Uncle Jerry and Uncle Jim Singleton, we were in the paper there. Had, had draft him, 
to go in the, in, in, in the military. He was going to get to take the test. <laughs> and he was just, he was, had a lick in his hand, whiskey, corn liquor. Mm. And his paper, he was so happy to go. He was going to go get in the army, go fight the Japanese, whoever, or the German, whoever, and he was so happy to go. And after he got in there, he was so miserable. <laughs> he, so, wanted, he didn't want to leave. He didn't think he would be going a whole year. He brought those boats right Yeah, he didn't, he didn't want, he, then he got to the satellite, mm. you know. Yeah. Anyhow, he, he, he went on uh, in there. What made him happy about going into the military? He's going to leave home, get away from Arizona for a while, you know. There wasn't no jobs, too. Holly. The team was going downhill, and uh, the America was just coming out of it. sort of a semi-depression like. You know, and you know, making money on the farm in the creek, and feed your children from the from the garden, and what a few little dollars you can make. But Marathon was moving along pretty good, because they had a few um, few people moving, coming down to the water and living uh, like it was a tourist area. You know, a few of the big shots be driving the automobile with the um, outboard engine. Mm. Well, we <laughs> pushing along. <laughs> and you stop trying to get your dozen to crash. Yeah, and we stop and look at them, and they make a way about that high right, and look up a toll of the tree. Uh -huh. They rock the boats, you know. And we had to keep building our boat. We couldn't ever stop building the boat because the boat was leaking. Yeah, well, one row, one, <laughs> we had our little one leaking bail, boat. one row. Yeah, one push. Oh, that was a good time, man. Time to remember. You know, it's like one of you didn't get hurt so, back in the day, the same we used to do. People would come down from different part of the country and uh, they had a car like a like a packet, mm -hmm. Studebaker, or the old Model A, yeah. strip down and bring their children with them. They'd be just glad to run and be so glad to see this area. And uh, they come down from different parts, you know what I mean? They'd be glad to come down through the water. Well, they like and that. they didn't know that people work down here. They like that now. Oh yeah, I guess yeah. yeah I reckon they're you know excited yeah. to come down. Yeah, here. you know. Yeah. And uh, oh yeah, I remember the bed and suits. Yeah, bed and <laughs> suits. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know when they do bed and suits. The women had on the bed and suit was built like a big corset. You remember? <laughs> built like a what? <laughs> like a, <laughs> you remember them corset? <laughs> <laughs> bed and suits. You all never seen them kind of bed and suits. One of the big ones. They were strapped like this, and they went down like this, and the Step down. Cross. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. everything was hidden but your legs and your arm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the business? I like a big concept. <laughs> yeah. And then what happened <laughs> a few years later, they France brought in, up, huh? after the war and everything, France opened up with what they call a bikini. Uh, <laughs> and the so breaking was crazy, man. It break out then, huh? <laughs> it was breaking out, it was trouble. God. It was big news, man. It was on, <laughs> then the TV came in. Oh, yeah. Black and white, you know. Mm -hmm. And only a few people had it. Yeah, had to go up right. town to go to the store to look at it. The little, but that'd be. The people out the window, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and then a few people in. Eason's? Eason's had one. <laughs> and Saturday night, he was covered up <laughs> with the local people, you know, mm -hmm. especially the kids, two young people. Mm -hmm. And finally, after 100 years, it seemed like, the regular people started getting a black and white TV about that big yeah. from the local um, um, supply, um, what, like like Mr. Snyder. Mr. Snyder used to run around Mr. Snyder used to trade up and tell you. For a dollar bring a week. <laughs> and Mr. Snyder was out of the car. That was a store. <laughs> he bring them up, bring them, bring them, and, and deliver it for you. Uh, uh, he had a store in Georgetown. He had a store in Georgetown, but he used his car to bring it through the country and sell stuff. Supplies. It was great. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what Mr. Snyder he used had, to do. Uh, he'd bring a, he'd bring an old pa old packet full of clothes, blankets, yeah. brogan shoes, stuff like that for the kids. And you didn't have any, it wasn't much money. So you could pay a dollar a week. Put it on charge. Lay put it on charge. Lay away. He leave it with you, and he come every week, every Monday or Tuesday, money. to get a dollar. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, Mr. Snyder would take a few a few eggs for payment. Then he'd take it back to town to sell them. He'd have a bushel of eggs laying in the back of his car sometime, a half a bushel, mm -hmm. that he collected for people for their bills. And you know what you pay for? A blanket? Maybe two blankets, or a couple of sweaters for your kids, or some brogan shoes, or a jacket. 
you know, so that was a great help. It was just uh, unbelievable. And they give the kids a piece of candy. What was the candy little, little uh, Mary Jane? Mary Jane. Mary Jane or squirrel nut. Mary Jane or squirrel nut. <laughs> you give the kids those things, kids things like that. Mm -hmm. Look forward to him, to see him coming in. Keeps the customers coming. Yeah, yeah. Right. he was a good salesman. I'll never forget it. Yeah. And if he didn't have the money, or didn't, or didn't have the eggs, I'll, I'll see, you see you next week. See you next week. It was always very, 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 very understanding. Mm -hmm. And I think this store in Georgetown was always called the New Store. The New Store. Yeah. They never really named. That yeah, was the, the New Store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The New Store. Right. Mr. Snyder. Mm -hmm. it, um, Old Man Snyder. Then the son took over later. You sold some stuff here one time, didn't you, Freezers. Uh -huh. Those long freezers yeah. and refrigerators. I don't know. Sure did. Everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He had a big trunk to his car. He had it delivered. <laughs> he had a, he had he, well his son did that. His son took later over. Later on, yeah. And he sold this old furniture. <clears throat> and whatever you want, Mr. Snyder had it. And he'd bring it to you. They pay him a certain money. Do it, do it on, on, on time. <laughs> and it, did Mr. Eason let you barter or buy yeah. things on time? Yes, ma'am. Jimmy Eason? Mm -hmm. Sure did. Tell me All the local Jimmy stores Eason. did that. That's the way the people had, only way they had to make it. Home describe elite. Eason's store for me. If you um, describe it for me, where it sat on the highway. And on, on Highway 17, mm -hmm. in front of Alex Singh's, um, what's there now? Spuds. Oh, the, the dead dog, right? Dead dog, right now. Dead dog's but in middle. It's but in front of dog, but it used to be across the street. Yeah, front of dead dog on the, where the old Bay Harbor used to be. Where the old be. Bay Harbor used to be. That's right. Big wooden building. Big wooden structure. Mm -hmm. Three stories. Mm -hmm. The store was on the bottom, and on the north end was uh, was um, Bay Harbor Grill. Cleveland staying up, staying up the place. <laughs> Bay Harbor That's Grill was on the north side up. <laughs> That's the third floor. Third floor where the girls well, used to live. The Easons lived there when I was there. Yeah. yeah, they lived there. With the whole family, um, Danny, Ronnie, Dickie, Danny, Brenda. Danny. Yeah. I don't know Danny. How, what relation he was. Danny Eason. Yeah. yeah. I see Dickie every now and then, yeah. Brenda. Miss, yeah, Miss, Miss, Miss Dot died, Dickie. you know. Yeah, Dot died. She died, what, last year? Yeah, last year. She, she was, was 92. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 92. Yeah. Back That's the hospital sale. Yeah. You go on the side door at Eason's? Did you go in the front door on the porch? You went in the front door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how was it laid out inside? You went in, front door, the, 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 the counter was on the right, was on the north side of the wall. You went the length of the building. Yep. And at the back of the building, it made a, a left turn. And at the left turn, it, it stopped. There's the back door went through there. But at the end of the back, there was a freezer. Mm -hmm. But it kept meat set. You could walk in box or walk in. The first one I was seeing. Mm -hmm. Then on the back had a storeroom. Go through the door, the back door, right, right in the building. And the door went right on to the back out, outside. You could come in the back room one or two. But it had a storeroom in there. And on the right hand side, there was a ice, a big ice box. And you, and then where the ice box was, where it kept ice at. There was a back door there too, also. And that door came out behind Bay Harbor Grill. There was a restaurant right. joined onto the same building on the north side. And the front of Bay Harbor Grill and the front of the store, the Bay Harbor Grill coming south, store. the store, and right in front of the store there was three gas tanks mm -hmm. where you come get your gas. gas. Right. Had a gas tank there. Or with two. Two tanks, I think it was. Easy. And back in those days, you know, gas was really gas. Yeah. Now you can't strike a match. No, you can strike a match all over gas. Fill it up. <laughs> <laughs> you put a bucket of gas out here. You couldn't strike a match anywhere in the area. Yeah. If it's in 20 feet of it, it would blow up. Yeah. Now you can put a fire all in the bucket. It might not catch. <laughs> you can you know, not trust it. It burn like burn like fuel all over. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, they had, they had different strengths of gas. What was the strongest gas you reckon? There was something so dangerous, man. I don't know. Because... Shell had the white gas. Mm -hmm. White gas was pretty good, was pretty strong. And then they had the red gas was um. But didn't uh, didn't didn't uh, 
the Eastern store. Didn't they have another one that used to be? Strickland. No, the, the Eastern store. I mean, the oh. uh, Home Elite used to have one right there where the old po little post office used to be and going back out to 17, a big wooden. That's the Home Eastern store. That Jimmy Eastern Daddy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Jimmy Eastern Daddy had the old Eastern store. The old Eastern store yeah. back down there. That we just saw all the fish. They tore that down when they built the, the highway. Built the right. highway. Right yeah. in the middle of the road. Right. Right, yeah. right there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that we used to go have a salt. That used to, Mr. Nansen and those to catch fish for a hundred thousand pounds, and then Mr. Eastman bought buy a whole bunch of it. Mm. And the ladies from home all around the area would come split mullet, salt them down, and them down. Salt them down in barrels, and then send them out here by the truckload. And that was a big business. Salt, salt fish, salt mullet, and sweet potato. That's right. Where, where did the salt come from? Was it delivered? It was delivered. Mm -hmm. Nobody was processing salt. No, not, salt not nowadays, no. no. It was delivered. It was delivered in, in bags. Bags of salt like this, 50 pound bags. White bags. And uh, it was cloth bags. It was sealed. Yeah. Because it couldn't be, because salt would fall through a little hole. It was, it was, it was cloth like this, but it was yeah. thick. Yeah. Thick cloth. Almost like, like canvas. Flour sack. Like canvas. Mm -hmm. And you said Easton It wasn't paper. It wasn't paper. Ma'am? Um, Easton, I'm sorry, Easton's did run credit. Oh, yes, ma'am. Everybody ran credit. You better believe it. And how about barter? I don't know, but bar like I don't know. We probably did, yeah. but we kids couldn't get into that. Now, I had a, I had a dollar a week credit there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. You a dollar, huh? I had yeah. a dollar a week credit. And that was great for a guy my uh, age, uh, uh, barefoot in the creek, too. That was big money, though. Big, I was making a, I was, had a job then. Mr. Eason had a cigar in his mouth, woman money. Twisted his It's side. a very Lucille Chewed boy, my mama named Lucille. He said, you say you want to get a credit account going? I said, yes, sir. He said, yeah. he said who are you? I said, I'm the Lucille boy. He said, what's your daddy's name? I said, George Pickett. Oh, you George Pickett boy, too? I said, no, sir. I had Lucille Pickett boy. <laughs> 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 I was, I'm Lucille boy, not daddy boy. I'm Lucille boy. You know, I like my, me and my mom's clothes, you know. <laughs> So um, anyway, my dad is okay too. Yeah, yeah. So I said, Lucy, I said, okay, Lucy, boy, how much you want? I said, I like to have a dollar. He said, okay, you can get a dollar credit for me. <laughs> now, a dollar credit, you could get 10 cents worth of candy, which was a bunch of candy. But yeah. I'd get me a, a piece of cheese <laughs> and a piece of Maloney Mal sausage. <laughs> and he sliced some nickel with a Maloney sausage was about that thick. And it had the cheese in the round. Wooden container, hoop cheese. You yeah. slice your old piece, put it on a piece of brown paper, turn you loose, and you're gone. That's your lunch. What <laughs> that day? Go in the creek, and I'd eat mine before I get in the creek. <laughs> but it was fun, man. Oh, and I always paid Mr. Easton his dollar. Mm -hmm. I never failed. Pay him on Monday morning, sometime <laughs> Monday. Mom, yeah. make sure I pay that money. By the mm. time you were bringing things out of the creek and then also doing yard work, you were making good money. And then as you got older, the Olivers had you do more work. Was it yeah. different work or just more of it? You more of it. I had, um, I cleaned the yard by myself then, just me. It wasn't up with just rake the yard. I cut all. One day I rake and then the next day I cut the grass. You know how you cut the grass? With a push mower. Had a spindle. Not with a motor, though. Not no. with no motor. <laughs> a spindle. It was sharp, though. And I'd like Still to work got with one. it. I could dress it just right. And I cut the grass, would have just a gray head on it. So I wouldn't have to push real hard. And she'd spin like you would and cut it just as pretty. <laughs> I had to make a nice ring to it, you know? And I could push fast and still cut, push slow and cut. And could set my own pace. They didn't mm -hmm. tell you, hurry up now, Ruth, if you got so and so to do. Well, none of that. I sat in my face, if I cut the grass in two hours, it's good. If I cut it half a day, it's good. But I like I like them half a day job like that, so I had to take my time and you know our kids are. And how did you transition? Went, did Teeny ask you to live here? Or did you ask to live here? Tell me about um, that, because I know your mama well, would have had to give you up to let you No, live here. my mama never gave me up. Okay. Oh, cause I see her every Monday. Yes. So uh, I just told mom I got a, I'm gonna be job my best I fit every night. So I'd be on job every morning 
And I just started staying, it was okay. Daddy didn't like him, but I, I didn't care. I cared too, but that was just hiding me a job then. You see? No, and, and I thought I was well, grown. Well, Roosevelt, you, um, when you... No, not really, but you, you tried to be as grown as you could. I can but remember you, you going did. home on Monday morning even when you were 25 years old. Yeah, yeah. I went to see Mom every Monday. Every Monday, I remember that. Mm. That's long. <clears throat> Anyhow, it's good. You want to take over, John? <laughs> <laughs> break, yeah, break. Yeah. Say break. It was, it was, it was, it was break time. good, it was good. <laughs> it was a good time. Yeah. yeah. I enjoyed you mine. Us where you were born? That's just a few, few little things. I was born in uh, Butreen. In Brooklyn. In, uh, in the sanctuary part of Butreen Gardens. In the uh, part, then. Back then, uh, we lived in Brookreen. Mm -hmm. uh, they couldn't lock it up because we lived in there. So yeah. what they did later on, they gave us property outside in the sanctuary part where I live now uh, so they could lock it up um, because back then we had a whole village. We had our own school and everything, you know, so it was a church. whole village, church, school, the whole works. So I was right there, and I went to Howard High School, and you know, but Paul is Island Middle School and Howard High uh, High School, and it was at Winyard. And uh, when I started working at uh, back in the days at Lee's Inlet Kitchen, and uh, then we got to knowing each other, and we became good friends, and and. Uh, from there, I came over to Oliver's Lodge because I had to be where he was. He was older than I was, but he was my brother, so I was following him. <laughs> so we got over here at Oliver's Lodge, and, and uh, like I said, we started working. He got me over here peeling shrimp. Uh, needed somebody to peel shrimp. So he said, uh, uh, you want to come over and help peel some shrimp over at Oliver's? Um, I can get you a job over there. So I came over and started peeling shrimp in high school. And uh, ever since high school, I've been here uh, peeling shrimp, working with Ed and Miss Teeny and Captain Mack and them. And uh, it, it was funny because uh, back in those days, uh, Ed used to pick up the help. He had, uh, that was a 50, what was that, that station wagon? A 57. 57. Chevrolet, 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 station Chevrolet. wagon, and he used to pick up the help. Well, <laughs> I used to feel good when he would let me go pick up the help because <laughs> I got to drive the car. And, uh, and well, who owned that car? I, he did. <clears throat> that was about sixty. That was sixty-five. I guess. Five, yeah. Somewhere. And I, I had it redone, and it, I bought it from Wesley Gordon. Yeah. And took the engine out of it, put a new engine in it, and he gave, he sold the engine to somebody. And the engine ran forever. Yeah, <laughs> I think I put about four in it. Because everybody drove that that station wagon. Because everybody loved fun. that station yeah, wagon. He was going around picking up the help. They know when he was coming. He'd get there, pick them up. Miss Eileen, black and white help, or primarily black help. What are we talking? Primarily about? the black help mm -hmm. because they didn't have rides, you know, to get to work. And from where to where? How far a distance did you travel? Up well, there's Merle's in that too. Actually, um, the farther south I ever went was to get um, Lou Nesbitt, um, Arthur Nesbitt. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was yeah. in that, that was in Litchfield. Litchfield. M yeah. Brook Green was usually Brook as far Green. south as I had right. to get. But um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, south, north, north Litchfield, Arthur Nesbitt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. right there. He was the reason that I that I learned to cook, you know, Arthur Nesbitt. Arthur Nesbitt. He didn't show up. We called him Baby. <laughs> yeah, big Baby didn't show up. Yeah, baby didn't show up. And there weren't no cooks. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Get right in there. But then, Nothing slowed down. I remember. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Mostly yeah. women. Though. Mostly women. Mostly women. So now, back. I was going to ask you too. How did you get to school when you went into um, Howard? Well, we had a school bus. They used to school buses from here to Georgetown. Was it regular county or state school Regular state school bus county, I remember yeah. for a long time, Reverend Bezler. Ran about 32 miles an hour all the way to Georgetown. Mm -hmm. to, get, to get about 35, we, we pulled a stop arm, the, everything we could to get two more miles an hour. <laughs> and that's when they had the old bridge. And for one of the buses to come through in a tractor trailer truck, you both, if you had to come in, go out and come in <laughs> so you could and flip pass the by and flip the mirrors in. Did and it still like rubbed. <laughs> <laughs> Did you play ball when you were at Howard? No, I didn't get a chance to play ball. 
I wanted to, but I, I never could. My, my dad died when I was real young. So I became the man of the family. So I had to do what I had to do. About how old were so, you when you lost your dad? I, I was about nine. How did uh, your life change at nine years old? It changed drastically mm -hmm. because I, it was uh, where I was one of the providers. Uh, back then, I was, I was um, like Roosevelt was saying, Rooster was saying, I was going out in the creek and getting clams and oysters and stuff myself. Yeah. And uh, there was a guy down here named uh, Clance Morris. Yeah. Uh, my aunt and them knew him pretty good. And so what he would do is come and pick them up and uh, bring, a truck, down bring a truck down and pick it up for us and gave us the money so we had money to eat. But of course now back then, uh, we lived like kings and queen because if you think about the seafood price now, Versus back then, we had shrimp creole, fish, oyster pie, crab cakes. We had all of those every meal, pretty much. Now it might have been with shrimp and it might have been grits and tomatoes, and uh, the next day it might have been clam and grits or clam and rice or oyster pie and whatever. But it was we got tired of it. We didn't care about it. We see this stuff yeah. all the time. Well, I don't want no clam and grits and stuff. <laughs> and now everybody's just buying it like it's nobody's business. You know, we want shrimp and grits. I'm like, God darn, I ate so much of that stuff when I was little, you know. But it was it was out there. But it was a lot of seafood out there then. Yeah. Now it's there's no seafood Not quite out as much there. as it was then though. I mean you could go out there and you know, with little boys, uh, we would go out there we, we call it when I lived down here where Huntington Marsh is now. I lived there, and uh, you'd go out there. We had a place out there called Speak Landing, and uh, man, go out there and dive out there in the summertime and get your bushel of clams diving. Oh yeah. Of course now you, you'd be scared to go out there because you don't know what's in the waters out there now. You know, the guys would go gigging and getting flounders, and there were holes out there. They'd come go down on this side and come up on that side. You know, two or three flounders. You know. Do you remember another name for flounder gigging? Flown. Pro Progan. Progan. Progan, yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, go Progan. Mm -hmm. You're Progan yeah. the daytime, you go gigging at night. Yep. Striking. Yeah, striking now. But, yeah. you know, back then, yeah, they probe, they, they go right on out there. Oh, yeah. Of course, we used to just go out there and walk on them, you know, try to catch one. They were so plentiful back then. But, uh, had but doing that and, and leaving from there, coming here and, and working with Ed here at all of us, that was, uh, that was a big thing. Um, because that transformation from having to be the person that took charge at home had to do all these things, and uh, I made good I made good money here guaranteed. when I was here. You were guaranteed a check. Um, money to carry. You were guaranteed a check. Uh, and Miss Tini, uh, it was funny because uh, she was the type of person when I when I started help cooking in there. Uh, it was funny because I was helping uh, Miss Arlene in the morning cook lunch uh, for the help. And Miss Tini would, you know, uh, come in and, and I would say, well, I'll go in the room because you always had to go in the room. Uh, Miss Tini, I need to go get some rice. Um, and rice back then was about dollar something, <laughs> you know. Dollar fifty. Dollar fifty. And she'd, she'd say, oh, go, give me the bag from in the bed. And I'd go under the bed, get the bag, give it to her. And, she give me twenty dollars, go get a bag of rice, you know. And I'd come back and I said, "Well, I got the rice, and uh, give her the change." She said, "Well, what's that for?" I said, well, "That's a change from the rice." Well, I gave you a dollar and something. She always would give me the rest of the money, you know. And I was like, so I was glad to go to the store every time, <laughs> you know. So I was getting paid pretty good. Oh, I'd be in there cooking, and nobody's in the kitchen, and she'd come in the kitchen and walk around and. She'd drop a $20 bill on the floor, and, and I'd say, um, Miss, Miss Tina, you dropped something. No, that wasn't mine. It must have fell out of your pocket. i like, no, that, that's yours. Said, no, I didn't have no money with me. That's your money. It fell out of your pocket. So of course, I had to take it, you know. So I made good money because she would do things like that, you know, plus what I got paid. How could she afford to be so generous? She was just a generous woman. Um, I, I never forget... Uh, um, moving forward, 
uh, Ed and them had the Chesapeake house and I was working at Chesapeake house and she had Roosevelt to bring her all the way to Chesapeake house to see how I was doing. Yeah. And, you know, I thought that was so nice. Drove you know, back to her, I remember. Yeah, she, she did. She said, I just wanted to come up here and check on you because when we were here working for them, uh, if we were going out, uh, she would know we were going out. She would tell us, now don't you spend your money. You go home and you wash up and come back. And she would give us that little $20 or $10 or whatever it was to go out with. You know, myself and Levi Austin and Edward Nesbitt back then, uh, that's what she would do. And uh, so she was, they were just generous people, you know. Of course, you know, I, my big brother, I could get what I want from him, you know, if I needed to, but, you know, because he was always there, you know. Uh, he had a car. I, 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 it goes back to, he had a convertible GTO, yellow convertible GTO. All right. <laughs> and, 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 the, and back in the days when, the, when the waitress used to be working after shirt. work, uh, we would go and uh, Ed, we would say, he would say, you know, maybe we go up the Little River because that's where all the waitress used to go. So he would want to go to Little River. So Captain Mac would catch us all the time and bring us to the front porch and talk. You know, I never forget that. And a uh, few nights he left but early, so he got to go to Little River. Captain Mac would catch me and put me on the porch right there. <laughs> and he'd tell me stories about the pirates and different things, you know. And one night he finally, he said, you wonder why I take you on this porch and tell you these stories? Yeah. And it didn't bother me now, you know, I like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, because I see how you fellas run this restaurant. He said, and I know one day y'all going to do something and you're going to build a restaurant and you're going to run it just like this. And it happened because he got into business. Then he brought me into the business. And when we built Drunken Jacks, that's exactly what he named it, Drunken Jacks. So that's the story he gave to do it with. And today, that business is still number one. Still clicking. I remember, still Crib, you told one. me one time, you said, uh, Bruce would be something on, he was on the stand on the back porch on a break time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was smoking. Crib never did smoke. No. Nope. And he said, no, we're going to do a rooster. I said, what? So one day I'm better build a restaurant to show y'all in this part of the country how to run a restaurant. Yeah. I said, okay. I didn't I didn't take nothing of it. And sure enough, bang. Yeah. And then again, bang down here in um the other side of the what's the name? Yeah. Well so we started out with, uh, started with Drunken the Jack. first one coming in was the um uh, was the Drunken Jack first. No, we didn't have Drunken oh, no, Jack. Channel first. Okay, we had channel the channel market. market. Yeah. First one now is Beaver Bar. Okay. But we had the channel market coming in. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. That was the first one. And, and then we you met down the other side of Charleston. What was that And before called? we built Drunken Jacks, we had a little place they called Snug Harbor. Yeah. That we yeah. that was a fishing port right there. Right. Uh, Rusty Draper and them had had uh, the Sun Gypsy and all those was in there, and we cooked little breakfast and lunch right there. Okay. And then we sold that business to the um, um, what's the guy's name over here on Seventeen? Um, Used to have rice planters. Used to have the, daddy, the rice planters. The daddy built the rice planters. Like and, uh, and if you if you look now, the lady that has the the crab lady, that was our building, <laughs> where okay. she's got right now. Okay. That's what we had at where Drunken Jacks is over, and we sold little sandwiches yeah. and breakfast for the fishing people going out. That same building. Yeah, that building. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cromley, the Cromleys, Warren. yeah, the Cromleys. Warren, Warren, Warren Cromley's Cromley. sons, we sold, right. we sold it to. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And then we built Drunken Jacks there. Yeah. What, what about the place on Garden? There's something in Charleston. He used to have the Chesapeake house Chesapeake. up in Charleston. Chesapeake, the Chesapeake house? Yeah. Okay. Chesapeake house is on the Savannah Highway. Yeah, okay, that's the one I heard about. I never did yeah. see it. Yeah. happened to go way down to Charleston? Yeah, he went. He went further than that. Went to Hilton Head. I wouldn't yeah. recommend it. Hilton Head. Fell a good point in Hilton Charleston, Head. Yeah. Tough market. <laughs> Charleston, yeah. That we had that when we had that gas shortage and all the inflation back in the early 70s. Right. And it wasn't a real good experience. It was a good restaurant, but it just yeah. it was just a bad time. It's kind of like that was not nearly like the mm. recession we have, we're having now. Right. But um. But pretty much everything that we had, except for the Channel Market, we've been on water. 
Mm. Pretty much. Some drawing with water. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But uh, it was good. You know, now see it. Yeah. His yeah. ear. <laughs> Y'all got a couple hours. <laughs> he's got a he's got a couple of hours for you here. Are you six years old or nine years old? Oh, I I came over here kind of by accident. Um, Cleve McCleary and I lived at the castle in the summer of 1960. We graduated from high school yeah, on June here. the first and went to work at Dawson Lumber Company stacking lumber mm -hmm. for the Dawsons and. Uh, we lived at the castle at LA. You know, Cleve knows everything and everybody, and he, he, Ms. Seo, who was uh, Sonny Seo's wife, was a head of the Girl Scouts, and they had a 99 year lease on the castle. And he went to her, we couldn't find a place to stay. And he went to her and asked her if we could stay there for the summer. And we would cut the grass and do all of, you know, keep it all clean and everything. So she let us do that. I can't imagine it, but she did. Two high school boys, and it, mm -hmm. this day and time, they would have torn the castle up, it would have been up with a pile of bricks. But now, I mean, back then we didn't do that kind of stuff. Well, we worked out there on the lumber yard all summer. Well, not all summer, but till the mm -hmm. 1st of July. And Cleves decided we weren't making enough money. So he came up here and he was, his mother was a Vereen. And of course, Ms. Oliver was a Vereen and Vereen's on several of the, of, right. of the restaurants here. So he said, I, somebody will give me a job. So he, he got a job bussing tables. Well, I don't, I don't think I'd ever been out to eat. And uh, he, he started on right around the 1st of July. And on the 15th of July, it was on a, on a Monday, Monday evening, he went to work. And uh, he, we only had one car, his car. It was a blue 52 Chevrolet and he had painted it, or we had painted it blue with a, with a brush. paintbrush. <laughs> yeah. But it ran, ran yeah. good. But anyway, um, I was down on the beach at the castle. I'd already finished all the stuff I had to do and I was down there talking to this girl. and. Um, I looked up and there was this man standing there with a captain's hat on and sunglasses standing on the dunes. And I kind of thought for a second that I had seen him. I think I had been up here with Cleve to pick him up or something. And I thought it was Captain Oliver. And he walked a little closer to me and he said, Ed, is that you? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, Cleve wants you. And he turned around and started walking. And I left the girl on the beach and followed him, got in his station wagon, came right here. They gave me a a bus pan and said bus tables and I didn't know what they were talking about because busing to me a bus was something that you rode on and that's the honest truth but anyway yeah. they gave me a, gave me a tablecloth a white tablecloth and I didn't know I mean I didn't know which end was up right off the farm you know stacking lumber all day but it was it was pretty nice um, places jammed full of people mm. now y'all picture this this is all sand out here right. that part's not there it's all sand and there are people. The restaurant's full, the porch is full. Standing. They're standing in a line down here going out that way somewhere. Now that part out there Wait. wasn't there. Yeah. It was a reedy place, which you remember mm -hmm. when they filled mm -hmm. it in. Yeah, I'm on the brother. The cars are all out here. And I'm in there with a bus pan. And they said, just pick up the dishes and put it in the bus pan. Take everything off, take the tablecloth off, roll it up, put it on top of the bus pan, put a tablecloth on, set everything in the middle, flowers in the middle and everything around it take it to the to the train board. I didn't know what the train board was, <laughs> but it was easy to find because we there was like six guys there washing dishes. No dishwasher, which I didn't know. Yep. That, you know, We didn't even know what a dishwasher was back then. This is July the 15th, 1960. And, um, We're smoking. And, mm. I, and I finished up that night and somebody came to me and said, what do you want to eat? Well, you know, being 18 years old and weighing 130 pounds and running 10 miles a day and working at a lumber mill, I've always had an appetite. So you can have anything you want except steak and lobster. <laughs> Everybody did that. Mm. Can you imagine how much yeah. that must have cost? Of course, things weren't like they, they were saying, yeah. things weren't then like they are now, price-wise. But anyway, I didn't even know what to order because I didn't know what a shrimp was. I never even seen one. <laughs> anyway, that was my first experience. So after that, the guy that didn't come to work, I guess I got his job. So Cleve and I came together after that, and we worked the rest of that summer, and that was 1960. And of course, Roosevelt was already here, and he lived upstairs. Yeah. And uh, I was, he was a lot bigger than he is. He was like muscular and uh, loved a box. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> and then Levi, that you were talking about, Levi yeah. Austin, was. Michael's playmate, Michael playmate. Andrews, was Dollar's grandson, mm -hmm. and he was his playmate. And he came to work every day on, with the help and spent the whole day, except not, not in, during school, but in the summer, spent the, the whole day with Michael playing Play. with him. And they played in the 
in the creek, creek. and they look like two fish. I mean, mm -hmm. they were the fastest swimmers you've ever seen. Dive off the dock, do everything. But everything that Michael got, Levi, Levi got the got same it. thing. If he got, Michael got a toy, Levi got a toy. And Levi was about 11 and mm -hmm. Michael was probably four or five. Yeah. But um, somebody mentioned a while ago about hush puppies. And I guess that was probably, I'd, I'd never yes. had a hush puppy. And I'm gonna tell you something. When you came in here at five o'clock after working all day in the lumber mill and they gave you a basket of hush puppies for a snack, <laughs> I mean, that was something good. <laughs> yeah. You could take it on corn and eat it in the morning mm -hmm. for breakfast. Right? Mm -hmm. Work, that. work till the you end of the right summer. Oh yeah, at, at Dawson and working here. You could heat them up and take them home with you. Heat them oh, up yeah. the next day. Put them in the oven. Work to heat them up. Yeah. And, and yeah. Cold. talking about uh, Captain Oliver and Mrs. Oliver, they were they were very unusual people. Mm -hmm. And the, you made a you asked a question how did, how did they afford to do all that? Well, yeah. if you, you can't imagine the number of people that this restaurant did in the summer. I mean, right. from the 1st of June until Labor Day, every day, we're talking about a 1,000 people. And that's with no air conditioning, no conveniences like a dishwasher or actually a hood. There wasn't a hood in the, in the, mm, the, not really. In hood, the kitchen. Not fans. You had fans, fans, fans that, that cool. you know, like, yeah. and the reversed the wall, you know? and, and drew the, the smoke and the grease out. There was no, no city sewer. We got that right. in the, in the right. mm -hmm. after we built Drunken Jack's. And the thing about it, uh, but all those people, everything pretty much was cash. Oh, it was yeah. all cash. It was all cash. You didn't yeah, have credit, credit cards card wasn't no such thing all that. that then, so uh -huh. you know, you had it all right there. Where was the money counted? Was was there ever a scare? Was there any, were you, did he count the money upstairs? No. Where was, actually, <laughs> actually, let, let me elaborate yeah. on that a little bit. This is an interesting mm. story. I doubt if, if you guys even know this. <clears throat> Um, of course, you know you know that this building didn't have locks on the doors. No, no, it, it was no. never locked. Mm -hmm. it, back. Somebody had to stay here all the time, right. and it was only closed on Christmas Day. And even though in the winter sometimes there's almost no business, it was mm -hmm. always open. Yep. And maybe not not everybody you know you didn't have Work. the same amount of help, but you had Miss Aline, Aline was always here. Aline was always here. There are two yeah. people in here working. Yeah, doing right. Things. Always, yeah. And um, but now getting back to the money, I can remember. Sometime during the 63, 64, we, we hired a cashier. Uh, Bernice Johnson Bernice, was, yeah. was Ms. Oliver's uh, niece, niece. niece, and she'd cashiered a lot. But one summer, for some reason, I think she must have gone on vacation or something. We had another cashier. Met her husband home up, up north. Mm -hmm. Ohio, and, mm -hmm. like um, Ms. Oliver asked me one night, she said, um, something came up about how busy we were. And she said, I don't understand. We didn't take in but $1,250, which... In mm -hmm. 1962 or three, it was pretty good, but um, took more. I was like, my goodness, I'm, I'm adding in my head, and I'm, I'm not real good with numbers, but when you put dollar marks by them, I can add them backwards and forwards, and I mm -hmm. could then too, and I knew that something was wrong. Yep. So I said, um, I said, let me go get the tickets. Well, the tickets that night, this was in the middle of the summer, and it, you, you know, your spindles, you put tickets on, they're a little tall, and, and they have a point mm -hmm. on them, and you just stamp, stamp them down. We, we kept all the tickets, and it had run over that spindle. And these are really thin little you know, sheets of paper. And so I, I took them and I counted and I counted and I counted. And we had served, I want to say, 1,052 people and taken in $1,250. Mm -hmm. And uh, while I was out there counting in the dining room, she was in her room counting money. And she counted it three or four times. She still had $1,250, mm -hmm. all $20 bills. No, I'm just kidding about that. But a lot of $20, a lot of $20 bills. bills. So I don't know what ever happened. But that cashier disappeared. <laughs> but we never had any she, trouble with any, anything that, else that yeah. I know about. No. But she had a she had a little poodle. That two, you went to that two poodles. You went to that door. Poodle let her know. You know somebody's dead. She had two or three of them. You know. In time. So that was that was her security during the passage of time. She had three, was she on three the main poodles. Floor or upstairs? Main floor. Main floor was her office. Yeah, right downstairs. Over. Her bedroom was the office. Yep. She did a business everything in the, the everything the bedroom in was all yeah. She had a lot of chairs on the bed and she laid down and talked to you. Mm -hmm. Or she, she sat up in the chair and told her kick back chair, I call it. Had a TV in there. Everything the was in that room. She said she did Shower. everything on the farmer's plan. Yeah. Because all the money came in in the summer. <laughs> and uh, I remember this this guy with GMAC, she bought 
she always had a new station wagon. Right. Not, she wouldn't let me drive it to get the right. help, but uh -huh. she always had a nice station wagon, and she would pay for it, a payment every summer or something like that. Every, every, and I every remember, three months, every three, every three weeks, I think. Every, well, 90 days, I think, was uh, quarterly. Anyway, she, yeah. she said, uh, this guy from GMAC told me one time, said he went to pick up payment, he said, and somebody took him to this bedroom and said, was, Twenty dollar bills laying all over the bed. And there was a little boy about three years old. He said there was money all over the bed, and there was a little boy about three years old throwing twenty dollar bills at everybody. <laughs> that was Michael, and Michael was kind of wild yeah. grandson. <laughs> but everything was cash. I was there one time, and I looked at it, and there was a there was a boat out in the. In the resort, you're gonna love this. There was a mm. boat out in the in the water yeah. anchored and I said Miss Bailey I said no not Miss Bailey Miss Lucy I know her last name now mm. I said Miss Lucy what kind of boat is that um, is that a friend or a foe and she said um, that's Hobby Nance's boat I don't know <laughs> <laughs> Friend of foe, Harvey Nance's boat, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so said, don't I don't tell know. Well, Harvey Nance was there, the gentleman. <laughs> he I was. worked with him for 19 oh, years. Oh, man. You know? Yeah, he Pulling was. Him over that's what we did. Miss Lucy was a oh, tiny man. little lady, and she yeah. was feisty as she could be. Yeah. What's that big around? That was yeah. Tina's sister. That's and, uh, Tina's sister. Yeah. yeah. And her nephew, her, she had, Bubby was her nephew, right? Lucy's nephew. Bubby Vereen. Mm -hmm. Bubby and Johnny. Right. Yeah. And Sammy. And Sammy. And Sammy. Yeah. Sammy kept Wayside. Sammy mm -hmm. kept it and then uh, got rid of it. And Bobby and Johnny were at Sunnyside. Sunnyside, right. 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 And Bay Harbor was another good restaurant. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lee's in the Kitchen, Bay Harbor, and Wayside. Ab Abinell. No, before that was um, Clipper Shoe. Clipper Shoe. Clipper, Clipper Shoe. Johnny Loud. Yeah, and yeah. somehow that, they were connected yeah. with the Vereens. I don't right. know which. Cloud was a Vereen. Right, she was. That's the team. Yeah. First cousin. First cousin. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I know that because so, um, Weston. Yeah. His wife was allowed. Yeah, right. But I don't know. <clears throat> uh, Evanel came a little later. Later, later okay, than that. Yeah, that was Evanel. That was um. Was it El Elbert um, Eason? Eason? Not Eason. No, not Eason. No, um, um, Ayers. Ayers. Yeah. Ayers. Everett Ayers. Everett. 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 Yeah. Everett. Yeah. Married yeah. Brenda. Now this Brenda. was no, that was his the former. Yeah, yeah, his daddy. And had his it. his mother, Everett's right. mother. Right. That her name was Nell, and she had a beauty shop. She died of cancer mm -hmm. about 1965. That was a big. Evanel. That's where the that's where Dark Side is. That's now. where Dark Side is now. Say it again. How do you spell it? E B E B dash Nell. I don't know how to get an E out of Ever. I don't know where to get an E. That's what that's it was. That's where Dark Side is now. Evanel. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dark Side. <clears throat> well, Ed, you were talking a little bit when we took a break, um, talking about your involvement here, and I like what you're talking about—the reputation of Oliver's Lodge. The idea there was brown bagging, but there wasn't ever any trouble. Must have been some big names that came to Oliver's. You were naming the five best restaurants, but Oliver's was always number one. Was Morris's was open at the same time, or was it out of business by the time y'all were coming along? Morris's. Morris's was an oyster Morris house. Morris was an oyster house. Plans. Yeah, like and there was another one over, Morris. Yeah. over by Bay Harbor. Less right. of a sit-down restaurant. Right. More of a... Yeah, yeah, Morris was, restaurant. if you wanted roast steam oysters, that's where you went to Morris's. Yeah, stuff like that, isn't it? Yeah. Half shell. Yeah. Or well, you're asking, or the bucket. Yeah. ask about the celebrities. I, you know, I, I really wasn't, I, I don't know much about celebrities, and I didn't know, I knew even less then. And But I, people would keep saying so-and-so's here, and I wouldn't mm -hmm. know who they are talking about. But one night, I was, I was seating people, it must have been 1961 or 62, I was in South Carolina at the time. In, uh, in, in college, and I walked out to take names, and I came down that line I was telling y'all about, mm. the, the line that was always there, it seemed like. And I I looked up, and there was somebody that I really, it was very unmistakable who he was. He didn't ever have to say anything. It was Coach Frank Howard from Clemson. And, if you know, coaches then weren't quite as well known as they are now. You see them all the time on TV right. now, but then, but I knew who he was, and before he could say anything, I said, Coach Howard, how many in your party? And of course, he he said something like, "You got you got it right, son." <laughs> and then he he um and I I didn't know what to do because here's a guy that I don't know if y'all ever knew anything about him. He's pretty gruff, you know, yeah. and, and he also was very popular. 
And uh, <laughs> so I said, I went past him and I took somebody else's name and I turned around and I said, Coach, there might be a chair right on the inside of that door right there. Because I knew I was going to slip him in and get him ahead of that line somehow. <laughs> and I knew I wasn't going to get killed doing it. So anyway, um, he did. He went inside and I got him a table. And I worried the whole night that that somebody was going to see him and know he got in ahead of him and come and confront me, but they never did. I would have just told him to talk to him. I didn't know. Yeah. But uh, there were there were lots of celebrities when well, they, when they would come to town. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Except for coming to the kitchen. Wow, a few. Always. Them. Always that. Like um, like Mickey Splain. Mickey Splain. All those. Remember Mickey Splain? You know yeah. Mickey Splain. Used oh yeah. To be. He wouldn't want to break the line. the line. Well, you know, you just had those people that knew how to come to the back door. And there were some people come to the back door, you put know? their orders in, take their food and yeah. go. Had a lot of those too. Rather than buck the line, they come and put the order in right at the back door. Fam endless families. Like yeah, it's, it's, you, Gordon you brothers had those, do that. yeah. It's kinda like when Ed and them had uh, salty seafood house. We had a in the kitchen back then you had Bud Long and all the big guys that's where they wanted to go. Come it was in the kitchen. kitchen and, you know, yeah. so we had to put a table in the kitchen for all those guys when they come in. The line, you know? We were about thirty years ahead of us. Thirty our time years and, ahead. And didn't capitalize on it. I don't know why we didn't. I don't, I don't know why we didn't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, big deal now, table, table table in the kitchen. Table is, in the kitchen is a, is big a very big thing yeah. some places. Yeah. I know yeah. Rosebud on yeah. Rush in Chicago. Yeah. You you look in the kitchen and there's a big table of and you wonder look like well, all of some back racketeers or something. But that's the way eat spaghetti. Picnic table, yeah. both sides. Mm -hmm. You come in here in the kitchen. You know, uh, they always say, "Well, we know where the good food at is yeah. in the kitchen." You know, we could get more. <laughs> Mickey Spillane was a—he was quite a character back in the '60s. Oh yeah. Oh maybe. Maxine, um, Ms. Oliver's daughter, did a lot of his typing, so I got to read a lot of his books before he even wrote them. All, all, <laughs> she typed them in double space on a yellow piece of paper, and I don't know why yellow paper, but. Uh -huh. um, I think it was I, the jury. I think that was, didn't he write that? Yeah. yeah that's right. That, that's a long time ago. He wrote quite a few. He, was, oh, he wrote yeah. them fast, too. He did. But you, if you if you knew Mickey Spillane, when you talked to him, you knew he could write. Because when he opened his mouth, words just poured out everywhere. Yeah. I mean, he didn't have to think. <laughs> I mean, he could tell more stories. And you think I talk a lot. Mickey could talk. I mean, he, he really could tell you some stories now. Remember, he always said, I don't write. I just type. Mm. And that's what you're saying. That's exactly, right he was exactly right, because yeah. he, yeah. he solid went, I mean, he could tell you the most stories and make you laugh. And so. he's, he's a part of Oliver's Lodge, because not only did he like to come eat here, but there's something else special about Mickey and Jane that you'll want to tell the camera. Oh. Because they live here. They're they part of They're too. part of the inlet, they got, they married, got married right here. here. They sure did. They I had their, um, what do you call it when you What was his uh, anniversary first wife? party? What was her name? Birthday party. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. Um, had a birthday party. Yeah, marriage. Yeah. Marriage oh, after the Mississippi. After, at what, a wedding. What was, it, what was his first wife name? Jane. Not Jane. Jean. Mm -hmm. the, the first one. Yeah, Jane. I went out Jean. with her. name was Jean. She didn't like Merle's Inlet, though. No, she's, she's, nice, she's a nice lady, but he I, always told her if she died, he was going to bury her right here in the mud. No, not Jane. Jane. Before that one. Jean. He oh. was married before. It was Mary Ann. Right. Mary Ann. Yeah, Mary Ann. Jean is the one yeah, that, uh, that he's married to now. Yeah, right. she, she, um, yeah. she was from Mississippi. Mississippi. If she you could ever see any two people that were more opposite. Yeah. And Might he, be me and Melissa, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> he always told her, I'm a barrier in Merle's Inlet. So <laughs> they finally separated. Got, they got they? separated before yeah. She, yeah. she could get buried here. And her children moved up north. He moved up yeah. to Bristol. They live with her daughters mm -hmm. now. Now, uh, his son, Wade, his son? He's, he's still he's here. Yeah. He just What's his name? out, though. He wasted. He still is. Well, y'all went here when Mickey and Jane got married. Were y'all here by any chance? I was not, me. not at the wedding. When he got married no. here, I was. Yeah. Had a wedding here. Mm -hmm. sure. Whereabouts at Oliver's Lodge? Where what? In front me. of the fireplace, in front of the, 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 the mantelpiece. In front of the fireplace. In front of the fireplace. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think sure we were born with Chesapeake House. Had the decorated. Had the decorated. In the 70s. Yeah, back in the 70s, we were up there. And it had a cheese. <clears throat> it had a cheese that you're supposed to spread on bread or cook it or uh -huh. herbs. Uh-huh. That you smell it when you got in the house, gentlemen. <laughs> you smell it when you I got in the house. I won't forget it. it. <laughs> we had to cut it up back there and serve it. Uh -huh. And, it, you know, I didn't serve it. 
but I had to open it and, and, and had the kitchen gone. I didn't smell like something you're supposed to eat. It didn't but smell like that, something you're supposed to eat. <laughs> it was imported cheese, some kind of imported cheese. You heard? Hey, man. You know what I mean. Yeah, and I, I got you. I, I wouldn't eat none of it. <laughs> it would smell it like smell right. It smelled like sour fish. That what it smelled like. Mm. Sour salt fish. You let it stay out and it got sour. Mm. That's the way they stay in the heat too long. <laughs> got a little sour smell. But they ate it. Though, they right? ate it. Yeah, they enjoyed it. It's imported. Yeah, it was imported stuff. Yeah, it sure yeah. was. It got it shipped in here from California, man. Yeah. It's all from Europe somewhere. That's, that's important stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was. And they had a flower was called the first time I've seen it. Bird of Paradise. Bird of Paradise. And it had his bed. The first had a mantel piece covered in it. And that's what Mickey and his wife stood there and they took pictures and pictures and so he got speeches. a lot of history there. Yeah. In that you know, building. And he came up for his birthday, yeah. 90. 80-something birthday, yeah. I forget now. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lee Midas was the cook. Mm. And, then we all, and then they let all the help come out of the kitchen <laughs> after the wedding, after the guests were eating and everything, and take pictures with Mickey Spain, just take pictures with everybody. Yeah. And everybody took a picture. And I, I, something happened to my picture, but he took a picture yeah. with all of us. That's when, that's yeah, when, just bad, big, when you big, had Lou and... Lou and Miss Arlene and Miss Irma and Miss Flossie and Prize. Prize and um, Zanny and some of Zanny. You something. had all those back then. Those was the Camel. main head cooks and yeah, dishwashers it, and man. uh you know I had a crew in there, what the, when you go back to those hush puppies, Miss Arlene made that hush puppy it's like, you know. That, that was the hush puppies. Yeah. Crib. Excuse me. Yeah. You and Crib, you and Cleve. And um, the girl was married to Sheila. Remember Sheila? Eddie Kenyon. Eddie Kenyon. We call him Ghost Rider. <laughs> Ghost Rider. <laughs> he was fast. He was shaking all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he died, you know. Yeah, he died. Yeah, I heard he way, way back. Yeah. Oh, okay. He didn't. He didn't live now, to fifty. Now, wow. Eddie Kenyon. Mm -hmm. Ghost Rider. When you and Crib went Crib and and Cleve. And Andy Kenyon was had a tray mm. to bring them two at a time. Yeah. And they started, they started throwing them under the table and all that. Oh, I remember back then. You know, then. trays at a time. Yep. And leave us a rooster. If we got to do something with this, I said, okay, what are we going to do? Let's, let, let's get this boys moving. That's all right. I said, let's catch up, fella. We, we was outside. Mm -hmm. Trays all over the place. And they didn't call us. I don't know who's the member, Crip. You had and you finally you said had them big boy three, we ain't got no room big that, three that compartment sink and you had wash water rinse water and final water that's right <laughs> on the dream board and you got in the middle 30 <laughs> minutes of washing and stacking I, i'll, I'll tell you, you know, all something about it. again excuse me mm -hmm. a dishwasher couldn't have done what you did no 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 oh no oh, no no no, no. no. couldn't keep uh, up couldn't keep up a dishwasher you, couldn't have done it you know it's back in those days you you paid they paid everybody cash every week every sunday mm -hmm. night and they paid them in an envelope with dollar bills or whatever. Yeah. And uh, we usually had, in the summer, we usually had six people on the drain board. Right. One person was taking the dishes that were, were clean to the to the cooks. Mm -hmm. Of course, they were warm because they were coming out of hot water. Then somebody was scrapping, and we put the, yeah. you put the scraps in one thing in the... Uh, paper. Paper in one. In a paper in one. And yeah. what, what was... Um, yep. People would take them for the hogs. What was this Flossie's Garbage. husband? What was it? What was George Jr. George Jr. Jr. He... He would always pick up the garbage and, and feed, feed it to the pigs. And, you know, there was no garbage service. And you were no, talking no. about the garbage can, the trash cans. Mm -hmm. I remember we burned our stuff. Right. We didn't get burned. Then he picked it up. Right. Yes, sir. But anyway, the um, I remember one day, it's funny, he's talking about gasoline. I, I poured some gasoline on the stuff to make it burn. And I guess the fumes got in the, <laughs> in the bottom. And I threw a match in it. And it blew the, <laughs> it blew the it stuff out <laughs> all over the yard. <laughs> Woo. It goes. I've Woof. done that too, gentlemen. Yeah. But anyway, it, 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 was a, it was a different world. Somebody picked that up. Um, Carolina and Southern, Carolina and Southern, Southern Process. And the same guy is still doing it. Yep. Yes, man. His, I can't remember his made, name. Uh, lipstick and hair <laughs> stuff and all that kind of stuff out of that. Of now they make diesel fuel out of it. Now they business. make diesel fuel, it's right. It's a good thing. Yeah. Every, every month, they pick it up. Yeah. Sure thing on the next. Mr. Eford Lee said it, <clears throat> told me one time, he kept all his MFB in cans behind the MFC yeah. was the name of the 
But then when it short and he kept it all and he sold it one time a year and he'd buy his son's cars with it when, yep, he, when that's he, what he sold he did. it. <laughs> that's what he told me. That's what he did. He's doing. Carolina and Carolina. Southern processing mm -hmm. out of yeah, everything back then was the MFB. Was it Marion? Fayetteville or something. Fayetteville, North, Somewhere North Carolina. Carolina. MFB shortening. Yeah. And some good stuff. That was some good stuff. I don't, know, stuff. I don't know why they quit. And uh, Lee, you know, yeah. um, I'll tell you about Theodore. When I met him, he was he always was cleaning up at the Inlet Kitchen early in the morning, and I'd stop at the post office. That was every day. We we stopped at Red and White to get food for lunch, because mm -hmm. Miss maybe in the summer cooked. Yep. Every day. Lunch. Uh, Actually, I mean, she could because Captain Oliver had right. had a heart attack, and he had to have certain. He couldn't eat just you know just regular food. He had to have something kind of bland mm -hmm. and with not too much calories. So anyway, I was at the post office, and I'd see Theodore, and I started waving at him every day. And then we once in a while he'd come over and talk to me. And, and I I did mention one day I said Theodore, if you ever want a job, come over and see me. Yeah. He was every bit of 14, but he was real tall. And so the next I think it was the next week after week before Easter Easter. In, in this Somewhere business, in nothing happened between Labor Day and Easter, but when Easter came, it was like a breath of fresh air. You know, you got some money flowing and excitement and all going on. So um, right before and Easter, he came in the kitchen too. or came came in the, the back door and he said, um, he said, um, when you want me to come to work? And I was like, when you want to come? And he said, um, can't come this weekend. I got prom or something. Prom, yeah. And then, but next weekend, I'll be here on Friday. And he was. And... He never washed the dish unless he wanted to. He went straight to the broiler, not the broiler, the grill. The grill. Straight to the grill. Yeah. And I guess it was because he was so tall because tall, he wasn't old enough to cook. <laughs> but he, he had a, Theodore can really cook. He can't cook as good as I can, but he can cook. <laughs> and and uh, he, I mean, it was like, it was wonderful because he was always on time. He was always where he was supposed to be. He was never a problem. And, and do whatever you need. And, whatever and Roosevelt, did, to Roosevelt never had too. a job. He did everything. everything. He worked yeah. in the yard. Yeah. He worked on the boat. He worked everywhere. He's yeah. kind of, and I kind of picked up what he's doing. I did the same thing. You know, we 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 end up meeting each other halfway. Some of them be clean up on one and one on the other. Mm -hmm. But Theodore was a cook. Now he he didn't ever do anything but cook. Yeah. Never got a chance. But by by, by coming over to Oliver's Lodge with him <clears throat> is what got me where I'm today owner of Drunken Jack's restaurant because working with him and him going to Myrtle Beach and working at Chesapeake House, uh, Ed Young uh, had owned it and I think you worked and part of it, got part of it and he always told me because we, when I came back from the military in Vietnam, we were working for Atlas Construction. Ed was doing buildings so he came and got me, so I got you a job. <laughs> so, you know, I was one of those, I want to take a couple months and do like the rest of the guys. I got you a job. So I went to work with Atlas Construction doing metal building. Well, back those days, uh, you know, you didn't make a lot of money in construction. Uh, but we had enough money to probably on Friday we bake, we got enough money together and we buy a chicken and some sausage and do a chicken bog every Friday. Well, this one particular Friday we was there and uh, put the chicken bog on that morning. You know, has to go a lot of them guys. It's uh, all right. Every time somebody go by the pot to check it because we were up on the building. Mm -hmm. I go by and I check it. I like, oh, I need a little more pepper. You know, so yeah. Ed come down. He said, oh, oh, I need more pepper. <laughs> Everybody came by, need more pepper. <laughs> when we got through for lunch, the rice was so black with pepper we couldn't eat the chicken bog. No, <laughs> oh, I remember. We Probably threw the chicken bog out for a dog. The dog came by and smelled it and kept on going. <laughs> a mockingbird came down, got one bite, and flapped it. <laughs> that rice stayed, that chicken bog stayed until we threw it away. Nobody could eat it. But that's the way we, we did every Friday because we never had enough money. If we bought one Coca-Cola, we split it. I mean, I, if I set mine down, he probably took it and be gone. I drink it. You know, and, but that's the way it was. So a few years later, after we started building a restaurant, he got me into the restaurant. He said, if I ever make it, you're going to make it. You're going to be in the restaurant business. And he, he gave me that word, and he stuck with that word. That That's why I always love him, and he'll always be my brother, big brother, <laughs> no matter what. Because from, because of him, I'm the now owner of Drunken Jack's Restaurant well, you and, know, uh, and Inlet Affairs. You know that I was you know, Theodore's he was best my, man. He was my best man at my wedding and everything.
I had on the best looking pink tuxedo you've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, mm. well, you know, I was you know, little he was a little taller than me. I can't say. You know, I was real. Scared. He always used to tell me, said, "Man, when are you gonna ever put some weight on?" I finally put the weight on there, you know, because <laughs> I was always so skinny, you know. <laughs>